How's it going Eliminators? Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to test a solenoid that comes off of a China ATV. So let's get right into it. So we're working on a Daymac. I believe it's a 150cc ATV. These are basically China ATVs. They're just a little bit bigger than your, you know, 110s and 50cc ones. And my customer was having all sorts of issues with it. He says that it wouldn't run right. So we're going to be looking at that, but that's going to be a separate video. And before I take the carburetor off, to inspect it and do a carb clean on it, possibly a rebuild and a tune. Uh, I have to get a baseline and know how the thing runs before I start working on it. So to do that, I hooked up my battery booster because he had a 12 volt battery in there that was completely dead. So I put 12 volts to this thing. Uh, I put the parking brake on because you have to uh, engage the parking brake up there. It has a safety switch on it. And when the ignition was on over there, obviously with the kill switch in the middle position because that's where it goes for your run and then off is either left or right. Um, like I said, the brake was pulled in. I went and pushed the button and nothing happened. I know that the button push start works and I can show you guys how to test for that. I know that we had 12 volts at the battery because uh, my eliminator had, I think, over 12 volts on it when I tested it with a multimeter. So that led me to believe that it was a solenoid issue. So a solenoid, got it right here. This basically just plugs into the wiring harness. And this right here is a two wire. So it has a negative and a positive. And then you have two terminals up at the top here. 12 volt positive goes to one of these. And then a cable hooks on the other end and that goes to your starter. And then everything grounds through the frame. So the starter would ground through the frame and then that would go back to the battery negative to complete the circuit. 12 volts is sent from the battery up to this right here. So 12 volts goes through this line into here. And there's a little magnet in here with a steel bar basically, and it has a spring on it so that it can always return to its normal position. Now what normally happens, you push your push button start, 12 volts goes to this solenoid here, and using an electronically charged magnet, it pulls up that plate, and once that plate lifts up, it connects 12 volts to your starter. Now, whether or not you have spark, that's a different circuit altogether. So in this video, I'm just gonna be taking you guys through the steps that I went through to uh, just kind of diagnose this stuff. So to do all the stuff that I'm showing you here in the video, you're gonna need a few things. So I'll show you what you need. Okay, first things first, you're gonna need a source of 12 volt power. You can use a battery. We're using an eliminator because his battery was dead. So we're gonna have to get him a new battery. You're gonna need a multimeter, you're gonna need an extra set of leads or a set of leads with alligator clips because they're a lot easier to work with. We have over here our burnt out solenoid or I should say seized solenoid to be correct and I'll show you guys why I say seized. We also have here our new one that I've ordered from Amazon and I even ordered a separate one just so I had it because these are known to burn out and for the price I ended up getting a spare one just to have it. Now, when it comes to these solenoids, depending on what model of ATV you have, you might have a three prong and you might have a four prong solenoid. So what that means is basically you count these one, two, and then you have on this one, another two here. Now, this one grounds through the cable to the terminal here. And on other ones, like I have here, I have two different stens. These are just riding lawnmower solenoids. And basically for this explanation, they're perfect because we have here a four terminal. So you have, again, your battery positive, and then this is where your starter connects to. And then you're gonna have a 12 volt hot from your key switch, and then you're gonna have a ground. On a three prong, your ground goes through the base of this. So a lot of times when someone brings me a lawnmower and they say it won't start, I look at the solenoid and if it only has a three prong, chances are there could be rust or corrosion built up underneath of here or wherever it bolts on and you might be getting a bad ground which would lead to a no start situation. Now the reason I'm bringing this up is just because you guys want to be aware of where you're putting your positive and your negative. So again, if you have something like this, you're going to be hooking up your positive and your negative to these terminals. And if you have a three prong, you're going to be hooking up your positive here and your negative to the base of the solenoid. So if it's one of these solenoids and it only has a three prong, it has the two up here and then it has one wire coming off of it, you guys are going to want to ground out or hook your negative up to the base of the solenoid itself. So the first thing we have to do is establish a baseline on our voltage. That means that you have to check to make sure you got 12 volts. So right here, we can see that this eliminator is fully charged, but I'm going to test it just to be sure. So I have my multimeter here and I'm gonna be setting it to volts DC and we're gonna go 20 volts DC. You guys can see we have zero right now. And that's because on this eliminator battery booster, 
you can see it's off. It's got a little kill switch there. So as soon as I turn this switch, you guys will see it goes to 13 volts. Now 13 volts means it has a surface charge. So I left that on charge overnight. And once you start using that, that 13 volts will go down a little bit, but that's okay. But this right here is gonna simulate a fully charged battery for our testing. Okay, now moving on to testing the solenoid itself. What I've done here is I've used my little alligator cables because they're gonna be a lot easier to get inside and hook up to these connectors right there because those are what we're gonna be connecting to. And what I've done here is I've just taken the end and clamped it into our clamps on our battery booster. So with your battery booster in the off position, you're gonna go ahead and get your solenoid and then you're gonna to wanna to hook it up negative to negative, positive to positive. So to establish which wire is positive or negative, normally you're gonna have two different colors and a lot of times you're gonna have either maybe a red and then a red with a black. Your red with a black is gonna be your ground. Sometimes you'll have a green and then a yellow with a red. Now, when I looked inside of this, if we look here, we can see that the yellow and the red is on the right and the green is on the left. And if we go up to look at it like this, we can see that there's a gap on the yellow and red side. Now, if we go over here to this one and we line this terminal up the same, you guys can see that it's actually backwards on the new solenoid that we purchased. So on these, it really doesn't matter which is negative or which is positive. For testing purposes, you just need 12 volts to go into our solenoids here. So I'm gonna start with the bad solenoid just to show you guys what a bad solenoid tests like, and then I'll go ahead and show you the new solenoid and show you how that tests. So what I've done here is I've just taken our positive from our battery booster and hooked it up to the red and yellow. Okay, so we have our old solenoid here, and with the leads hooked up, we're gonna go ahead and flip this, and you should hear a clicking sound. Now that clicking sound is coming from the switch itself. But on this one, when you turn it to about here, that's when it sends power through. So when I turn this on, you guys should hear a clicking and there's no clicking. Now, if I were to leave that in the on position for a few seconds and then turn it off, if you go to the bottom of your solenoid, it should actually feel warm. And basically what that means is that water has just got in there and corroded the magnet and the shaft in there and just seized it together so that when you do supply 12 volts to it the plate can't move up to connect your two terminals which means that you can have a good starter you can have uh, 12 volts on your battery but as long as the solenoid is seized your machine won't start unless you were to manually go and jump those two terminals and after i let it sit the bottom of this is a little warm. So again, this one guys is garbage. We're just gonna throw that over there. I've now hooked up our new solenoid right here. And when I go ahead to flip this switch, you guys are gonna actually hear that thing click. And you're gonna even see it move. So that means that when the 12 volts goes from the battery booster into our solenoid, the magnet is picking up that plate and connecting those two terminals. Now, a lot of people, when they get to this point, they would stop their testing and they would say, that solenoid's good to go, let's get it back onto the machine. But there's another test that we can do. We can do a continuity test between the two terminals at the top. So what we tested was the magnetic pickup and essentially we're testing that the wires are good and that 12 volts is going through that connector because again, it could just be the connector at the ends of those wires or it could be something like corrosion caused by water that got in there or the thing just sitting not being used for a while. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get our multi-tool. We're gonna hook it up to the two ends of the terminals where your battery positive and your starter cable go. And then once we flick it on and the magnet connects those two terminals, we're gonna see if we have continuity between the two terminals. Because I've seen solenoids like this guys before where the battery pickup works, it clicks when you turn it, but there is no connection in between these terminals. And that is normally due to corrosion right at the base of those two terminals. So the plate comes up, but the plate is too corroded to pass an electrical current between these two posts. So this is a pretty simple test, and uh, for the time it takes, you can go ahead and do this. So we're gonna get our multimeter. We're gonna be putting it on continuity, and continuity is that symbol right there. We're gonna hook up the ends of our multimeter to these terminals, and because we're testing for continuity, uh, it doesn't matter what is negative or positive. Now, this is gonna be a little tricky because I don't have an extra pair of alligator clips for my multimeter, so I'm gonna have to hold those. So I'm gonna set my camera up, and then what we're gonna do is, once those are connected, we're gonna flip our switch 
12 volts is going to be powering that. It's going to bring the terminal up and then we should get continuity between these two terminals and it should tell us. So it's reading one right now. But if we touch these two together, you guys will see that it should go down to zero because there is continuity and there is little resistance in between those two terminals. So we can see here with the battery off, if I touch these two terminals, we do not have any continuity. Now, if I flip this on and we touch it really quickly, you guys will see it drops down to zero, zero, one. Now we don't wanna leave that on too long because you can burn out your solenoids, but that does show us that this solenoid is in perfect working condition. Now, if you have an old solenoid like this one and the magnet pickup isn't working, you can take it out, maybe hit it with a hammer if you wanna save some money. Uh, the new solenoids that we purchased we're from China, we got them for like uh, $10 I think, and we can charge them out, make a couple bucks off of them. Uh, if I had to buy this here in Canada, they were like $35, and I ended up getting two for like just over 20 bucks, saved myself and my customer a little bit of money. But if you were on a limited budget, you know, you wanna save a little bit of money, go ahead, take this, hit it with a hammer, try to free up that corrosion. But again, like I said, even if that magnetic pickup works, if you don't do a continuity test between these two terminals up here, chances are because there was corrosion in here before, you're gonna have corrosion up here as well. So for 10 bucks, uh, we waited a couple months to get the parts in, and now that we have them, we can go ahead and replace the solenoid. Now on this specific model, our solenoid hooks up down here under the front left fender. So we have here our battery positive. We have our cable that goes back to the starter. This is just a rubber boot that's covering it, but there's the hookup right there. And then we have our two prong terminal. And one of these wires goes back to the handlebars right up here to our push button start. And I know that works because I've tested it and I'll go ahead and show you guys how to test that because it won't take long. So for this test, I've hooked up our alligator prongs just because they're a little bit easier for me to film with. They hold themselves in place. We're gonna go back to continuity. So you wanna make sure that's on continuity. And what we're gonna be doing is taking this alligator clip and hooking it onto the positive wire on the plug where the solenoid goes. And then we're gonna take this and touch it to the frame. And then we're gonna go up, press the push button start and see if there's continuity between the circuit. So we have zero continuity right now. You don't have to worry about having a battery hooked up for this because it's just a continuity test to see if we have continuity from the switch through the wire just to make sure that there's no damage because you guys could have what's known as a short to ground on this wire leading back up to your push button start, which means that if it's grounding out, you're not gonna be getting 12 volts at your solenoid. So again, if you did this test and your solenoid worked, but your machine still won't start or you don't hear your solenoid at least click, then that means chances are you have an issue from this cable somewhere back up to your push button start. So what I've done here is I've just taken our alligator clip and hooked it into the female terminal of that plug. And I've done that on the yellow and red end. And then I've just taken our black ground here and hooked it up to a bolt that goes through the frame. And with our key switch in the on position, and again, kill switch on and brake engaged. I'm gonna go ahead and press this button and you guys will see we do have continuity going through it. It doesn't necessarily go down to zero because we are going through a bolt. So there might be a little bit of extra resistance, but this means that when I press and release this, you guys can see that there is continuity. So what that tells us is that our push button start is in working condition. The wire that travels down to the solenoid is in working condition. Our new solenoid is now in working condition. So now that I have everything hooked up, again, like I said, we know that there's 12 volts there. We know that this solenoid works. We know that the push button start works. So I have this turned on. I have the brake engaged. I have the key switch on. But unfortunately, when I push our push button start, the solenoid does not click, which means that this machine has some type of wiring issue from our battery to the push button start up here, possibly the key switch, I'm not too sure. The guy said that this thing sat in a barn for a couple years and for all I know, there could have been mice that got in there and chewed on a wire. What I do know, again, is that our battery booster has 12 volts, but I also know that these wire terminals up here are really ratty. Like you can see this one here, guys, it's super loose, that's almost falling off. I don't know the shape of this one because it's got some electrical tape on it. Now it's not a fuse because I looked at that before, 
but I'm gonna look at it again anyways and now I have to go through all of the wiring but that is how you diagnose a solenoid issue. But like I said, I'm gonna be doing all kinds of videos on this thing because the guy that brought it to me said he's in absolutely no rush. It's currently a blizzard outside right now, so the guy isn't gonna be using it anyways until spring, summer. So again, this thing's just been sitting on the sidelines. We were waiting for parts from China, those solenoids to come in, so we saved a little bit of money. Again, you gotta wait when things are coming from China. I ordered them off at Amazon. I'll put the link in the description down below if you guys wanna order any of the stuff that I order so if you guys are interested in buying one of the solenoids for yourself you can go and use that link and it'll take you to the Amazon link that I bought my solenoids at I think they were like ten dollars and twenty three cents Canadian but again I'm gonna have to go through all of those wires now but at least I've done a process of elimination so I know it's not the solenoid now because it's brand new I know that it's not necessarily the push button start because we are getting continuity through that circuit so what I've done now is essentially limited the issue to a section of wires that I can now easily go and diagnose. So I can go and cut off the connectors that were loose at the end where it hooks up to the battery and I can replace those. I can go through and look at any wires that could have a little bit of rubber insulator worn off. So it could be a short to ground where it's grounding to the frame and not letting the electrical current flow through to where it's supposed to go to. So as far as this video goes, I just wanted to leave that to the solenoid and the electrical tests. So if you guys enjoyed the video, think about leaving me a thumbs up. You know, it really helps me out. You can click Click here to subscribe and you can click over here to watch one of my previous videos. I upload every single week so be sure to come on back next week and check out what we got new on the channel. And as always guys, thanks for watching.